HSBC BWF World Tour. We're in Mulheim on the Ruhr, the city on the river here in the west of Germany, and it's semi-finals day. Six matches coming up from the Energy Sports Hall, a really intimate venue, and as you see, pretty much every seat is taken. Around 3,000 is the capacity here, and we should be in for a hugely entertaining afternoon. These are the various different category of events that we'll have in 2018. And this particular contest is a Super 300 event. 11 of those throughout the year. You we'll see how they're divided into different categories. The grand final is in Guangzhou in December. The top eight in each category qualify for that. We've already enjoyed action from the Far East uh, and Switzerland very recently, as well as India. Uh, we're not going far after this either. The All England Open, one of the biggest events of the year in Birmingham. Then we go down under in May to New Zealand first and then Sydney, Australia. The US Open follows in California and we're back to the Far East in Malaysia and Indonesia in the middle of summer. Well, we kick off with a women's singles clash, Chen Yufei against Anuchion Jindapol, who's already won an event this year. Then it's mixed doubles, upcoming Chinese pair, Ji Ting and Yu, against surprise semi-finalists Noor and Tigerson from Denmark. Our women's doubles uh, offering features the defending champions from Japan against Bulgaria's Stoyeva sisters. Then it's men's singles action. The unseeded Japanese Kenta Nishimoto takes on Chu Ten Chen, who won here last year. Our men's doubles match features Inui and Kaneko of Japan against the Olympic silver medalists Shem and Kyong. And last but certainly not least, the other men's semi, Yuki against Long, which has the potential to be a classic. Well, here's how the women's singles draw has panned out. We're concentrating on the bottom half, Chen versus Jindapol. Uh, the other semi, which will start on the other court uh, in around about uh, half an hour's time, Yamaguchi against Okwara. And of course, the winner of that match will play an hour semi-final winner tomorrow. All five finals live for you tomorrow afternoon. Now, I should point out as we watch the toss that this is the first tournament to feature the new experimental service law. Chen Yufei leads the head-to-head -head one that, as you see, and that was pretty recently in the Asia Team Championship. But this new service law is important. Basically, how it's going to work from now and provisionally until the end of the year, the whole of the shuttle is going to be below 1.15 meters from the court surface. And they do have special measuring devices, the service judges. We'll show you those as we go through the afternoon. So, Chen Yufei only turned 20 at the beginning of the month. Former world junior champion. Also a former Asian junior champion, ranked eight. As you can see, that is her best ever. On her first senior title at the Macau Open in 2016. And here's her path to this semi, and it's been very straightforward. Just about half an hour, and yet to drop again the number four seed. Nichon Jindapol, who is 26 now, ranked 12th in the world, has been one place higher. That was uh, just a couple of months ago in January. And I told you earlier that she had a victory on her CV this year. That was the first event of 2018, the Time Masters in Bangkok in January. And she also hasn't really been extended so far. Three matches, and she beat the number two seed. Song Ji Hyun in the quarters, 12 and 17. Lean Angle from the host nation is in the umpire's chair. And there's the man, Tony Torsonson, who has the honor of being the first service judge to help enforce these new rules. And you saw that little bit of plastic in front of him on a kind of tripod, has a black line and enables the service judge. There you see it, just the bottom of your screen. 
enables him to see whether or not it's a legal serve. There you go. 1.15 metres, and the whole of the shuttle has to be below that mark. We had uh, a few service faults in the early rounds here, but they have lessened now that the players have got used to this new law. And it's really been brought in to make everything simpler, to make it more easily understood and generally fairer to everybody. Previously, the shuttle had to be hit from below waist height, which was defined as below the bottom rib, but difficult for service judges to always see that accurately. So we'll see how that new law goes. A little sideline to our German Open. You're just about set on semi-finals day. Always a buzz when we get to the business end of a, a tournament. Lots of prize money on the line as well. Well, our umpire did do the introductions, but no microphone. But it is Chen Yufei serving. Always difficult on the backhand with the shuffle coming over your shoulder like that. I think it's important from Jinderpol's point of view, she makes a decent start here. If you let Chen Yufei get away, she's hard to catch. That's much better. Smash was relatively straightforward. It was the previous stroke that did the damage. Had Chen Yufei in no man's land. One, Mentioned that previous match earlier this year. Did go to three games, so every likelihood this could be a tight contest. What all? Good leave in the end from Kinderpol. Jindapal, obviously, the more experienced of the two. Well, I think the shot was there to play. She didn't miss it by much. Certainly taking an aggressive approach so far, the tie. Victories in Germany last year, won her first major in Canada in um, 2013. Misjudgment. The other thing to mention is we've had Four. right on the line, as you saw, seven serves so far, and uh, no hint of anything above 1.15 meters.
mixing it up, Jim DePaul at the moment. It's always been strategically proficient. Just keeping Chen Yufei guessing. Long serve again. And certainly winning the tactical battle so far, the tie. by a distance that was a good meter Four, long six. Oh, that was a super shot almost effortless from Chen Yufei but certainly the best stroke she's played this match so far from both players that, that actually dropped in by a considerable margin Hi. just starting to get Jindapol to change direction at will now Chen Yufei after by her standards a sluggish start Seven, six. four points in a row she's won any better Eight, it's pretty deep seven, from Chen Yufei but dispatched by Jindapol middle of the racket There's not too much drift Eight. in the hall oh. slightly left to right as you look at it you can see she knew she'd got that all wrong the moment she struck it eight all now Jim DePaul had to react, thought that was going to go deep, it didn't. ago Nine, 
it's almost a mixture of the sublime and the ridiculous at the moment from Jinder Pol. She's played some Ten. magnificent shots. Nine. Also, quite a few unforced errors. with Chen Yufei enjoying an 11-9 advantage. One's entitled to a little bit of good fortune. see she's frustrated with some of these unforced errors from the pole. Just wide. It's nicely set up actually by the tie there. Chen Yufei running all around the court. Ah! Almost surprised when she misses that kind of shot. She's always had great hands around the net and very reliable for the most part from the back of the court. Not that tight. So it really has been nip and tuck in this opening game. Jinderpol had a three-point lead early on, but since then, barely been a point between them. Inside the line, not even on it. Thirteen, twelve. Oh. 
It's almost like neither of them can really grab the initiative. Again, 14, a little careless 13. from Jim DePaul. <laughs> Almost too ornate that. Just get the impression this is a big point coming up. We watch a replay. Difference between 16 13 or 15 14. Good leave. A heart in mouth moment for a minute. 14, she was very close to it. She could see the trajectory was taking it wide of the sideline. I think Chen Yufei was going to leave that, but the last minute realised actually it's not going long. And it was, well, anything she could do to just get it over the net. Very easy put away. Looking at there, very late decision, but just dollied up for an easy kill. So back level again. Good, and there's going to be an appeal here. So first time that we have had to use the Hawkeye, which usually gets the crowd going. There was no call, so the shuttle was called good. Let's see whether Hawkeye agrees. Big point as well at 15 all. Yep, yeah, it's caught a piece of the line. Should be 16-15, the house score's correct. Superb. Just angled the racket head, and that took the shuttle away and out of Jim DePaul's reach. That was really clever. Chen Yufei. Change of racket for Jim DePaul. She needs a change of fortune here. Yeah, well done. She was so quickly onto that. <laughs> Saw that that shuttle was just floating over the net, and she was in like lightning 16, for a very standard 18. put away.
funny, you would think Chinderpole in the longer rallies with the greater experience, but if anything, it's been the other way. Chinderpole's won more of the shorter rallies, Chen Yufei the longer ones. Which did well actually halfway through that point to get the shuttle back after Jinderpole enjoyed a net cord. 20 smashes at all from Chen Yifei in this match to date. Every error now. Critical. This late stage of the opening game. It. There is a challenge though. So Hawkeye in action again. Twice in a matter of minutes. This time Chen Yufei hoping that the call was erroneous. It's called out. And uh, by a margin too. Gonna just sneak over, but it didn't. 19. Nail biting conclusion to our opening game of the day. She nearly got that one back. Terrific rally. And Chen Yufei has engineered a game point. Jinderpol. But in 20 minutes, Chen Yufei comes through 21 
So just about set then for our second game. Second game. Love all. Play. Good to report the new service experiment. Working well, not a single Ready to play. fault in that opening game. Too much for Junipol to do anything about. One, four. Oh, that's a delicious angle. Two. Really can be a, a master. Those kind of shots. <laughs> well, she'll be wondering how she lost that point. With Chen Yufei. After that little exchange at the net. Well, it's a really good start for Nietzsche on Jindapol in this second game. Four, Almost look of disbelief on Chen Yufei's face when that didn't clamber over the net. It was a gamble, and it didn't pay off for the Chinese.
Just about. So it's going to be challenged, though. And that, that looks close. Your first impression was that it might have missed the line, but Hawkeye will tell us. Needs badly to stop the momentum which has been running against her in this second game. Chen Yufei, here we go. Yeah, well wide. So it's going to be 6-1. Changing her body language in the last five minutes. Amazing. Seven, one. play from both women at the net. <laughs> well, she missed it, but it was a hugely entertaining point. It's almost an afterthought, wasn't it, from Chen Yifei to play that initially. We saw the fist pump. She needed something to happen. Still five points behind, though, in this second game. Couldn't believe the luck there. Just sat up and said, hit me. And she didn't disappoint. Well, again, it was a late decision for Chen Yifei to play that in the her penultimate stroke in that rally. It does start to get inside your head when you've made errors. She was almost at the point of leaving it, then decided to play it. And she was somewhat discombobulated in the point after that. Longest rally of the match. Make her feel a little bit better. Jim DePaul didn't see that coming at all. Nice deception. She needs a lot more of that kind of thing. She's going to get back into this second game.
So they'll go for the interval with Genderpol enjoying a most improbable 11 3 lead, having lost the opening game. Important from Jinderpol's point of view. She doesn't want any complacency keeping despite this big lead. She hasn't missed many of those, to be fair. Normally so good at that kind of shot. Five, Just got to take it point by point, Chen Yufei. Try and find a way back into this second game. done it again. She really is extraordinarily adept at playing that kind of shot. The angle she creates, the deftness of touch. Superb. Almost a nod of acknowledgement there from her opponent. Been a procession of points. 
Nietzsche on Jindapol in this second game. I think she, she has certainly improved, but there's no question Chen Yufei has gone off the boil here. Well, by her standards, that was a bad miss. little nod to her coach she knows she should have won that point but she still has a very healthy advantage here Emotion there from Chen Yufei. So clearly, she has not written off this game in her head, nor should she. She was eight points behind when they went to the chair. Now she's reduced that deficit to five. If she can start to sow a few seeds of doubt in Jindapol's mind, who knows? Shot that set up the easy kill. The opponent in no man's land, all she could do was just knock the shuttle back towards mid court. Very easy put away. Slump of the shoulders from Jinder Polk. So Chen Yufei in double figures now in this game, and that didn't look likely at one point. If she wins the next couple of points, there might be plenty going on inside Jinder Polk's head. 15, 10, 10, 15. Missed it. Well, she's going to challenge. I think that's more out of frustration than a genuine hope that the call was incorrect because to the naked eye, that looked wide. And 
she knows it was a good opportunity, which she'd set up with her own good play. And looks now as though it will be Jinder Paul's point. Indeed, it will. It was wide by a distance. Fair, every let caught up until that point had been uh, gender pole, so I guess Laura Averages says Chen Yufei deserved one at some point. on the exchange and it's within three points of forcing a deciding game 18. maybe she's uh, just taken the wind out of the potential Chen Yufei fight back long as well well that was the shot of a player who <laughs> knows there's a Third game coming up momentarily. Eight game points for the tie to level up the match. Missed it, and you have to say that's a really spirited fight back from Nietzsche on Jinderpol, having been pretty much outclassed at times. And she's won the second game 21 13. We have a fascinating decider coming up momentarily.
Showing you the uh, point for Chen's winners today. Those drop shots, so many of them. Skinderpol. She's certainly been more aggressive than her opponent in terms of the number of smashes that she's hit. And those telling ankle drop shots have caused. Can you face all kinds of trouble? The reason there's a delay, you can see it there. The Chinese having some treatment. That little toe. She was actually struggling with that at the end of the first game. Obviously, was able to soldier on without any medical assistance. So many changes of direction in terms of movement in badminton. If you've got any problem, any injury anywhere, this sport will find it. Oh, the snazzy piano style socks. on two courts today there are four matches scheduled on court two tomorrow will just be court one for our five finals so let's hope from Chen Yufei's point of view No issue with that toe. Stops her giving him her best in this deciding game. Pretty sure that's the first service error of the match. Good. Just strikes me watching Chen Yufei in that point that maybe her mobility is slightly affected. Not moving quite as freely now as she was earlier in the contest. And that was good as well. And you, you do wonder if she wants to try and keep the points as short as possible if that foot problem is affecting her. That's two she's left. Both wrongly in the early stages of this third game.
Any desperation maybe about that shot. I think that time might be affecting her maybe more than most of the spectators think. Clearly not moving as freely. And all of a sudden, Jindapol races into a 4-1 lead. the game plan be more aggressive try and hit more winners hardly seen a, a smash of anger from her so far that found the target though Well, if the Jindapal plan was to get Ken Yifei running around as much as possible, it's working. That was a classic example. Once again, albeit with the help of the net cord, the drop shot was too good. Disgusted with herself after that. Wasn't even halfway up the net, I don't think. Mini fight back from the Chinese from 5 2 down. On the Macau Open Grand Prix event, as an 18 year old, Chen Yufei. Kind of announced her on the big stage. Playing an hour on court, 
nothing to separate these two. One game or six all. Very hard to pick a winner from here. Exactly the same result. Fairly easy decision for Jim Paul to let that drift wide of the sideline. Good judgment. A few centimetres wide. was a slightly tired looking shot from Jindapol. So they have been on court over the hour now. Well, it's a game plan that's worked pretty well. She's dragged Chen Yufei in with those drop shots. And punished her with the overheads, but that was a surprising miss. for Ginger Paul. This one didn't help her, though. She'll go to the chair for the interval with an 11-8 lead, Chen Yufei. Remember, she needed a bit of medical treatment at the end of that second game. 
I think her movement is restricted, but so far she has the advantage in this deciding game. 11-8 at the interval. First point that she's really dictated for a while, Jim DePolt. Hardly landed a jump smash in the match so far. Ten, oh, that wasn't 11. particularly close either. Fist of Chen Yufei tells you that for once she's come out on top in one of those little drop shot battles. placement and power. Probably would say there wasn't as much on the clear as there should have been, but even so. Sudden, those are missing, and all of a sudden, Chen Yufei with a four point advantage in the decider. And these short points will suit her with that toe injury. Another error. Costly for Jim DePolt. challenge either. And I think Chen Yufei knew she got that one wrong. 11, yeah. 
That's another cheap point. Surgeons continues. from her point of view she was right on top there she had all the momentum that might be a, an important point for Chen Yifei Before that, in all honesty, Jim to Poland, she was made to pay for it. See, the racket was clearly dangling on the wrong side of the net. So 17 13, some daylight for Chen Yufei. Drifting away from the tie. The start of the second game, Chen Yufei there was all over the place, and again, that may have been partly due to that toe problem. Now she's two points away from a place in tomorrow's final. <laughs> well, two can play at that game because she's seen Michio and Jindapol do that to her countless times. Well, here are seven match points for the Chinese. They get her into tomorrow's showpiece match. on Jindapol. Despite that toe injury, she clearly was bothered by it. Had a really slow start to the second game, which she lost. And she's still got a slight hobble now. And she's got 24 hours to hopefully get some more treatment. But fit and firing for tomorrow's final. 21-19, 13-21, 21-14 in an hour and a quarter. I don't know. 